right, welcome back generals to another let's fix generals zero hour to make the best game ever. Last video, I can't remember what we did. Uh, ah, we added uh, new command line arguments. Uh, okay. Um, I think there was one more argument that I that I wanted to add, but I forgot what it was. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, it will probably come to mind eventually. This uh, match percent, perhaps we should call it simil similarity. Match count, mismatch count, similarity. Let me put that percent. Maybe. Okay. Massage in ASM strictness. Right. Um. So strictness so we need something like a switch switch strictness case match strictness lenient lenient then max match count is Mm. 
uh, need to think about this carefully. So, match count. We probably need another function, get match counts. Here, do that. Yeah, get mismatch counts. I think this is correct. <laughs> it's quite a mouthful. <laughs> yeah. And here, get max match amounts. Oof. We need to get. Get. Counts. Get match count strictness. Zero There's quite a bit of functions here. Should probably move them to the CPP then. 
Okay, let me, okay, so get this match count. Match count, get max match count. Okay, simplify this here. Well, to be fair, it was easier to read before. Let's revert it. So
Hmm. Strictness. Match strictness. So this is match count. Max match count. This match count. Similarity. Similarity get max similarity. All right. Okay, here we say if if match count does not or if max match count is not that if max mismatch count is not that this is max similarity similarity Max similarity does not equal similarity. Okay, max mismatch, mismatch. Let's simplify this here. Put a label here. And then we assign name equals label, not null point, uh, question mark. The voice unknown. const
Let's make uh, undecided the default so that the compiler is happy. Okay, so let's um, let's think that through. So we get a match strictness passed. It's undecided. So undecided means our match count will be just match count, right? And the max match count will be this plus that. So. So these eventually mismatch, and then it will append this. Yeah. Same for mismatch, and same for similarity. We could also write this differently to we say, like a range, this to that, match count, say or <laughs> how about that yeah Then there's also still this unequal thingy. Maybe equal this one. So we also need to do the same thing here.
I'm a bit suspicious about this here. Is this correct? Because, because this is also true if there are just maybe mismatched bits. Right. So this doesn't seem right. Hmm. This doesn't seem right. Um, hmm. This match. So It's maybe mismatch. Okay, it's maybe mismatch is identical to it's maybe match. I think that is correct. Yeah. Okay, but is mismatch? Is mismatch? It's mismatch. If mismatch bits, let's write this out. So is mismatch. If, if this is not zero, or if this is not zero. Right? Anything else? Now, is that the same as, is that the same as the other, not this match? No. Hmm. I, to, to me, this looks correct now. Maybe I'm missing something. Let's see where this was used. It's mismatch. If mismatch bits are not zero, or mismatch reasons are not zero, then it's a mismatch, yeah. It seems plausible. And it is a match if everything is zero. <laughs> but what about these? It's maybe a mismatch bits. Maybe mismatch. Uh, 
it's maybe match mismatch bits maybe mismatch bits mismatch reasons mismatch bits maybe mismatch bits mismatch huh. uh, somehow I'm confused by this I don't know it should be but to me it just looks reasonable but maybe I'm missing something again it's easy to make mistakes yeah it's <laughs> very easy to make mistakes so is maybe match or is maybe mismatch is maybe are we even using this Yeah. This mismatch. Okay, so to me it looks like then this condition was wrong and and this condition was wrong. It was because this included is maybe mismatch as well. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, uh, to me it looks correct. Mismatch bits are not zero or mismatch reasons are not zero if maybe mismatch bits Well, if maybe mismatch bits are not zero, so it's maybe a mismatch, should that be classified as is mismatch? And it comes down to the strictness. Boy. <laughs> ah, boy, boy, boy. Okay, where is this maybe match used? It's maybe match. It's match. It's maybe match. Oh, I'm 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 really confused by these maybe matches things. Uh. Which maybe indicates that there's some fundamental flaw. I'm not seeing it right now. So something is a definite match or a definite mismatch. And then we have a condition that puts a question mark on it. It maybe is a match. It maybe is a mismatch. I mean, it doesn't nothing speaks against this logic. But then, how? What if we check is match and it is? A 
mismatch. Is maybe match. Is maybe match. So uh, is maybe match. Never matches is match. Yeah, and is maybe mismatch also never matches is match. So it's in between, undecided. Yeah. I think that makes sense though. They are, all of these are mutually exclusive. All of these are mutually exclusive. Yeah. It's mismatch. Yeah. Okay, then how do we deal with the is maybe match in here? Okay, let's move this here. Enum class is um, match. Match value. Is match is maybe match is mismatch. Okay, this maybe mismatch. 
Well, we can make it explicit. Is maybe mismatch equals is maybe match. Zero, one, one, two. Okay. And then we create a new function. Get match value. And we pass ASM strictness. Switch strictness. Case lenient. Case undecided. Case strict. Okay, so lenient. So if it's undecided, then it should be this here, right? So <laughs> Why is it so hard? I don't get it. <clears throat> Somehow this is harder than I thought it would be. Okay, so if let's go with undecided, it's the middle ground. We are undecided. So so if If is match, then return is match. Else, if can say else if that return is um, maybe match else mismatch return So let's copy this here as well. So So 
So if we are undecided, then then these principles apply. If we are linear, if we are lenient, then then we only say if that and that if those things are zero then it's a match else mismatch right it can never be it can never be maybe match yeah i think this makes sense and here on strict we say No, strict this is this, and lenient is no, huh? Ah, strict is this here. Yeah. So. You know, on strict, it's only a match if the maybe mismatch bits are zero, right? Okay. Um, let's put here some. Yeah. Okay. So let's look through it. Pa. Strictness. I think that this is correct. <laughs> Maybe. Oh. Oof. Let's also move this to to here. So this should also be const, const, and remove that. All right. Okay. Good. Um. Yeah. Okay. Let's think about this once more. Does it really make sense? So if we want to evaluate the mismatch info with the strictness, then we pass it in here and then it checks if it's lenient. Then if mismatch bits are zero and mismatch reasons are zero, then it's match. Otherwise, mismatch. So if if the maybe mismatch bits were not zero, it would still match, right? Yeah. Undecided. If all three things are zero, then it's a match. If it's maybe mismatch bits, if maybe mismatch bits are not zero, then it's a maybe match, yeah? 
Otherwise, it's a mismatch. Yeah, strict. Everything needs to be zero. Then it's a match. Otherwise, mismatch. That looks correct to me. And is match is simply everything zero. Is mismatch one of these things? Not zero. Is maybe match this thing? Yeah. Okay. It, it looks correct to me. Okay, then let's go to here. Okay, and then here we would say is um, match value, match value equals Mismatch info dot get match value match strictness. Okay. And then we say switch. Switch match value case match case maybe match maybe mismatch can be redundant here, yeah? doesn't matter. Oh already appeared, okay. Well that's case ASM mismatch. Good. And then we move this here, break, and maybe here, break, and all this here, break, and that. And default asserts false break. Yeah, then we remove this. And this should be now our new logic. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, go once more here. Let's search for all occurrences. So run comparison. Look at instruction to check if there is a match for the head. Not is match. Mm. Is match. Match count plus plus. Maybe match. Maybe match count is match. Mismatch count. Yeah. Okay. And here, maybe match. Yeah. Okay. And maybe mismatch is never called. That's fair. Is mismatch. Okay, so we only we only ever look ahead.
We only ever look ahead if we really have a mismatch. If it's a maybe mismatch. If it is a maybe mismatch, well, maybe match. Then we do not look ahead. Why? I thought about that yesterday as well. Um, no look ahead if mismatch uh, no that's wrong look ahead if mismatch Uh, no look ahead on maybe mismatch because now we need to come up with a reason. <laughs> look ahead if mismatch. No look ahead on maybe mismatch because why? Why? So it is maybe mismatching, yeah? because of uh, unk symbols but mm -hmm. no luck ahead on maybe mismatch Oh, look ahead on females. Okay. It is, it is maybe mismatching. Now what? Well, uh, okay, we can definitely say if, if there, if it is a match, right, a definite match, no look ahead it's matching fine okay if it is a maybe match does it make sense to look ahead it could make sense because it could make sense to look ahead on a smash because maybe you have a, uh, i don't know maybe Maybe you have a match. You, you have a maybe match. Yeah, there is a unk symbol on one side, and on the other side there is a 
there's a definite symbol. Then you could look ahead and check if you get a better match, right? And if you don't, well, then if you find no better match, then you simply move on, right? Because it's considered matching. So these need to be asymmetric, I think. I, I think, let me, so here we would say, he would say is match. And then we move this here. And this here. Uh, look ahead if maybe match. Look ahead if miss mismatch or maybe. Or maybe mismatch. Perhaps there is a better match ahead. Let's put this here in quotes. Okay. And then here in our look ahead comparison, Here we say, here we say, if match and then we rename this to do we even need this Look ahead. Mm. Ah. Look at comparison. Let's rename this to is matching because it's no longer just a consideration. It's definitely matching.
Okay, so if it is matching already on the first go, then we don't look ahead, easy. If it is maybe matching, AKA maybe mismatching, then we look ahead and check if there's maybe a better match. But there won't be if the symbol is definitely unknown, right? So the look ahead would only yield a good, a better result if in fact there was a situation where you had a, by chance, you had a, like the instruction was the same, everything, but the symbol was mismatching and you look ahead and then you find that the perfect match, then the look ahead would yield the result. But otherwise, so I, I expect that this never really happens in practice, but it could happen theoretically. Okay. And then if there is. If on the look ahead, if there is a definite match, then the look ahead will succeed with the new match. Otherwise, it will just keep on going here with the maybe match it had previously, right? So it goes on and on and it will be treated like it is maybe match here. Yeah. I think this makes sense. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Until I change my mind. <laughs> uh, but I think it it looks sounds reasonable reasonable to me. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds reasonable. Mm -hmm. Let's compile this. Oh. It almost compiled. <laughs> okay, uh, default here. Oh, it compiles now, so it must be correct. Um, is a match of types. Da, da, da. Yeah. Okay, so if we run this now, um, yeah, let's test our new additions. So Oh boy. Okay, so we have a look ahead limit, match strictness. Maybe we should rename this to just look ahead limit, match strictness, print and deadline. Print is yeah. So look ahead limits. Match strictness. Okay. Okay, 
Get limit, match strictness, and then print indent len, print asm len. Okay. Good, then let's make this. Let's make this look ahead limit. Let's. Yeah, 20. Okay, match strictness we have at undecided. So let's leave it at undecided for now. Undecided. Let's put the indent len to two for testing and the ASM len. Let's put it to 40, no, really short, oops. Okay, let's put that here into our properties. Okay, and let's test that. Well, it doesn't crash, must be correct then. Okay, so certainly the text is now much shorter, 40 characters, yeah. The indentation is also two characters, yeah. We still got the question mark here, yeah. 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 Okay, then let's test um, the um, where's it? Yeah. Strictness lenient. Yeah. So basically, the question mark should now become equal, yeah, and it does. So this is now equal, uh-huh. Similarity, that, that, yeah. Let's put it back to undecided. Undecided, apply, okay, so, We have 16.100.13.8. Let's run this. Right. And now it's 14 or 16, 100 or 102. And whoa. What is this number here? <laughs> Uh, okay, something is exploding here. <laughs> let's see. Um, let's go ASM printer. <laughs> what did I do wrong? Uh -huh. Somehow this percent is breaking things. <laughs> I don't quite understand why. Maybe we need a space here. If that's true, then there is a bug in the format library which doesn't surprise me because everything has bugs. All code that you don't write yourself has bugs. And the code that you write yourself especially has bugs. Unless you make no mistakes. Yeah. 
unless you make no mistakes and that must be the goal make no mistakes uh, I don't understand this number here where does it come from It doesn't uh, print percent signs somehow. Do you need to escape them? I do wonder. Maybe it's like a special argument that, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it needs to be two. I, I'm a bit baffled. I'm really baffled by this. It seems like that uh, the, the FMT library uses a percent sign for something. Aha, uh -huh. you need to put two, otherwise it does something else. It expects an argument or something. Maybe, maybe for legacy reasons, they allow percent and then the printf formats. Maybe, maybe that's why, yeah. Interesting. Okay, that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, similarity that to that. Okay, so this looks correct to me. And then we can say, now let's put it strict. Strict. So now it should just be the lowest match count 1212. No, mismatch 102, 1402, 12, right? 1402, 12. Let's see. Yeah, 1402, 12. And this is now a mismatch because it's not matching strict yeah okay good i think this works um do we need to check anything else um The look ahead. Yeah, let's put it to zero look ahead. No look ahead. So, so basically it, it should never have something like this. It should every line should compare. So there's no no shifting. Yeah, let's see. Let's see if that works. Yeah, apart from the lock, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this works. Okay, cool. I, I like this. This is, that is very good. Good, um, then we need, we can remove here these comments. Let's come and make this configurable. I may have done that. Address land compare them. Mm -hmm. And just one. 
implement. Uh, anything else? Oh. Here. Good, uh, then let's see. Good, so print indent len. By the way, we can also check um, sim.s indent len2. Yeah, but that also works. Good. Then Let's remove those overrides again. <laughs> okay, indent len, that's good. This is good. Uh, look at limits, match strictness. Yep, that's good. Runner. Good. 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 Main CPP. Look at limit, match strictness, print indent land, print ASM land. Good. Max instruction count for trying to find a matching assembler line ahead. Default is 20. Assembler matching strictness. If lenient, then unknown to known symbol pairs. Ah, but this is not correct. Even unknown to unknown symbol pairs are treated as match. Um, let's change this description. If lenient, then unknown to known slash unknown symbol pairs. To no unknown to. Okay. And I think we also have here unknown to known slash unknown. Okay. Good. Um, if lenient, then unknown to known, unknown symbol pairs are treated as match. If strict, then unknown to known, unknown symbol pairs are treated as mismatch. Default is undecided. Back to main. There's a dot missing. Look at that. Unacceptable. Unshippable. Um, good. Uh, line is a little bit strong here. A little bit long. And strong, maybe. <laughs> uh, well, the problem is... So if we remove the clang format, I expect all hell will break loose. <laughs> Let's see what happens. <laughs> Oof. No way. No. 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 I rather keep it like this and just scroll left and right. I. At least I know like where to look for things. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Good. Um, let's take this. Well, we could make it shorter by <clears throat> by moving those texts out as well. 
Mm. Yeah, that's fine. It's fine. Good. So, all right. Compare. Look at. Uh, let's also rename here the look ahead limits and the match strictness. Okay, 20 undecided 480. Yeah. Okay, look ahead limits. Strictness in Dentlin ASM. Lin. Yeah, that's good. In Dentlin, in Dent ASM, look ahead match strictness. Uh, is the order here matching? Let's see. Yeah. Okay, good. ASM printer, append white space, truncate in place, front truncate in place. Okay, I just renamed here. That's good. ASM printer, pass in dentlin, append this. This I think this looked good as far as I could tell. This is good. This is good. All good. Good. This also worked correctly as far as I could tell. There. Yeah. And now this is good. ASM matcher types. Okay, we added these enums. Yeah. We added all these helper functions, move the others to the CPP. Okay. Strings and all of this. Yeah. ASM matcher, look ahead limit is matching, yeah. And ASM matcher, look ahead limit is match, look ahead false, otherwise do look ahead. Look ahead if mismatch or maybe mismatch, perhaps there's a better match ahead, yeah. Okay, go put a look ahead limit here. Is matching, yes. And here, not is mismatch. Uh, ah, that's on uh, look, look ahead comparison. So if is match, then it's definitely matching. Yeah. And then we stop the look ahead. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, I think this is perfect. Uh, then add command line options to control indent len uh, ASM len indent length assembler length assembler line length to control uh, match strictness and Control the look ahead limit, match strictness evaluation, or match strictness. 
Ja, ja i... Edge strictness, evaluation, indent lengths, assembler linings. Add command line options to control the look ahead limit, match strictness. Look at limits, match, strictness, indent length, assembler line length. Okay, I think that's good. Okay. Commits. All right, let's give an update here. Um, I have completed, I have finished implementing command line arguments and controls for the comparison look ahead limits. Match strictness. Maybe match. Maybe match, etc. Uh, indent length. Max assembler line length. Okay. Good. Um, Okay, so next thing to implement, I think we still don't start with UI. There is more. I think there's two more things and I forgot one. <laughs> so I only remember the other. Um, what we need, we need to associate um, source code with assembler addresses on one side, on the PDB side. So, so it basically we want to know like, okay, what C++ code does actually belong to this assembler instruction for ease of understanding. Yeah. So. So, so yeah, we need to make this link and then can, we can also output this in our ASM printer. Yeah. Maybe as optional setting. Good. Um, let me also, uh, next to implement, associate <clears throat> CPP source code lines with assembler lines and print that next to the assembler instructions.
Good. Um, then, yeah, we can do that next. Uh, in the PDB, we already have, in the PDB reader, we already have the source file information to get hands on the uh, where, where is it? Here, source line info. Get hands on these source lines. So we should be able to to do this. Good. Um, I now I remember what the other thing was. What we had documented here. Add undecorated name. That that's what we also need. We need the ability to to toggle between decorated and undecorated names. Because because the undecorated names will be easier to decipher what it actually is. Like these decorated names are hard to look at. Yeah. So we need that as well. Yeah. Okay. But let's do the. Let's do the source line stuff first, which is also a, a bigger task, but uh, I think it's fairly possible without complications. Yeah, we just need to get the stuff into a good data structure and then it should be, should be simple enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Um, anything else? No, I don't think so. Good. Then I will take a break now. I wish you a great day or night. Until next time. Goodbye.